Hey YouTube. Last week, Ice Gear released Laplace. And Ice Gear is the maker of uh, Cassini, which is one of my favorite iOS synths. Like I've got all of the iOS synths, but I keep going back to Cassini because of its uh, you know immense complexity. It's basically just you know mostly subtractive synthesis, but it's got a lot of complexity because of various uh, envelopes that it provides. And Laplace is kind of the opposite in that it's a complex kind of synthesis with a very simple interface to get into it. So. Uh, let's get into it. It's, uh, using resonator synthesis, which is good for making, uh, strings as well as kind of bells or gamelins or things like that. So that's, that's what I want to do here. I'm going to make a, uh, ensemble of, uh, bells and chimes with a kind of string thing underneath it. And, uh, I'm starting off with just the initialized patch. I, I, I'm cheating here, though. I'm throwing in uh, a couple of effects. I got the delay in and uh, the reverb just so that it sounds good while I'm working on it. Um, it's mostly just boosting the uh, mids. And I got a arpeggiator in here with uh, some variations on a random theme so that I'm not just hitting the same button over and over again. So uh, this is actually a really cool way to work with it. Uh, if you just hit hold and hit arp, and get it firing. And now you can start shaping the sound as it's playing uh, all these notes. Um, so the way that this works is you've got an, a couple of exciters. You've got a click and you've got a resonator, which is a whole bunch of different filters that you're throwing this click or noise into. And the way that you shape the sound with your source and all of the various filters, uh, is, is quite unique. So I'll, I'll show you uh, one of the one of the knobs that does the most to change your sound is the stiffness. So you hear how that's taken on a a much darker kind of tone, or at least a deeper, fuller tone than when it's over here, and it's kind of. That is a lot of fun. Their, their color can also make it kind of brighter or darker. And then you've got your, your typical pitch thing to just drop everything down. Uh, there's not a lot of different envelope modulation types that are available to you in this, but there are a few interesting modulations, including uh, the ability to use uh, the key as a modulator on the stiffness. So uh, higher keys are pushing the stiffness higher. Or if you go in the reverse. Now there's a lot of different variations. You're getting some of the, the, the tap, 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 and then the bong kind of sounds. We make that more bongy. And the second most uh, influential knob in here is the decay. So listen to how much this drastically changes. So that's changing the length of the click, like it's a little pulse that we're sending at all of the, the various filters in, in the resonator section that we're going to get to. Uh, but with this kind of fun, almost bell sort of sound, let me make this sound a little more bell-like. All right, that's good. We'll leave it at that. Now I'm gonna flip this mix thing over here to the noise. And you start the noise by filtering it with a low-pass filter. And there's going to be you know, a whole series of things that happen after that. And this is what I'm going to use to make my kind of stringy sound. You can almost hear that kind of string, like guitar sort of sound as like a character in that. And you can have fun with this with the, the envelope and doing all kinds of weird stuff, but since I'm... Since I'm using this uh, ARP, uh, it's not a really good demonstration of uh, the complex envelope, but I have added a little bit of an attack so that it, it, and I've got both of these going. 
they're kind of sounding separately, even though it's the same note hit that's causing them both to trigger. It's adding just a little bit of separation with just a little bit of an attack. And you can really kind of crank up that to give it kind of a, a more aggressive sort of uh, uh, edge to it with the resonator. I've taken that too far. Now the noise is beginning to sound a little belly, or a little percussive at least. You can have fun playing with the envelope on this too. So that's the noise. It's giving me kind of the string thing. I'll make it sound better in a, in a second here. Um, this uh, is a good time for me to point out that the, in the delay, I've really cranked up the feedback and that's what you're hearing a lot of right here. Um, you know, it's really filling in the, the area with this zoom, 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 zoom. And I'm uh, doing a, a slight time offset, so, so this is on 1x, and this is on 0.66. So the time is making, you know, the, the time is the same, but it's being treated at a different ratio on both, so that you, it's coming at, at your different sides a, a little differently. Uh, I, I think that's a nice, fun way to expand uh, the, the feedback to really make it broad. And uh, the reverb is just kind of a regular reverb. Um, so now that we've got our exciters, it's time to start playing around with the, the uh, resonator. And one thing I, I want to show you guys like right off the bat, if you turn off the dry wet right here, it loses anything you do in, in the rest of this. So uh, I'm just gonna leave that on here. You can use this high pass filter to roll off any lows if you've got like a lot of messy stuff going on at the bottom. But uh, I'm liking the way this is sounding right now. I don't want to screw with that. Um, there's, once again, a mix knob here where you can mix in a sine wave that you can then screw around with with uh, frequency modulation of your exciter. So right now you're hearing the sine wave being screwed around with lightly by everything that's going on over here, uh, which presently is just the noise. You get some really like, great different sounds with the uh, frequency modulation. Uh, I mean, there's just like a, a whole wide variety of things. Uh, I'm gonna give you some pointers here. I really like to take this ratio really low. All right, so it's giving you this sort, sort of subtle thing that's happening. But then you can exaggerate this, the subtleness by changing the pitch of the sine wave dramatically from the, what's going on over here, because the uh, so let me switch this over to using the click too, so you, you're getting the pitch of the click um, versus changing the sign, so... So that's giving you a lot of different sounds now because this ARP is going through all, all kinds of different notes, and that pitch is now uh, like practically a full octave above everything that we were doing over here in the exciter. So by making the, the FM and your exciter dramatically different, you get all kinds of great sounds. Like this is, this is what we had to begin with. Now there's this entirely another new and weird thing going on. And you can get really weird if you want. I do not. This is going to be one of the bell sounds in this collection. Like, I'm going for a bell sound over here and a bell sound over here. So there's going to be two different bell sounds. And 
Uh, let me remove that release. You can further screw with the FM by changing the fine tuning uh, because uh, frequency modulation is, is basically multiplying these two audio signals. And if you are sticking to the course, you're, you're basically getting within the range something that's, that's kind of harmonic. But as soon as you start throwing in the fine, especially if you're screwing with the ratio like I am, you... Oh man, I lost my place there. Close enough. I'll just show you. It gets really weird. So now it's taking on this, like, kind of urgent quality to it. Let me give it a lot more. So like that, I changed two knobs and it just took on a, a, a radically different tone. And I only changed those knobs slightly. Like watch how little it takes on this fine to change this. So uh, FM synthesis is, uh, uh, I've probably said it in other videos, like it's really good for uh, making bell sounds, but I usually feel like I'm screwing up the FM synthesis if it, it starts to sound like a bell because it's so easy to make a bell sound in FM. It's like you, you're not making anything new or interesting, you're just making bell sounds. But in this case, this is a really good use of that to add variety to everything else that's going on because when I mix this back in with everything else, Trying to decide how to make that sound a little bit more pronounced with everything else. Okay, yeah. Raising up the release gave it a little bit more breathing room inside of everything else that's going on. So now the main res resonator section here is uh, being mixed with the FM, but it's not mixing into the FM. So both. Basically, both these are going into both of these at equal portions, but they're both going out to the last high-pass filter, which, once again, if I turn that to dry, it's, it's completely cutting out all of this. So, uh, in, in the, the main, like, resonator section here, uh, the, you once again get a lot of different ways to, to play with the sound, and there's actually two different types. This one... Type B sounds a little too hollow to me, so I'm not going to be using that, but uh, you know, you've, you've got your basic low pass filter here with the frequency, so you can just carve out the, the high end stuff. Like There's all kinds of stuff that we weren't hearing before that's like way up in the, the upper frequencies. And then strength is kind of like the resonance, but not really. Uh, Like it's, it's probably easier to think of it as like the slope that it's cutting off rather than peaking as, as resonance is usually thought of as like a peak. Uh, it, it feels like it's, it's mostly just how it's cutting off and the color once again uh, uh, changes the tone. Uh, you get kind of gnarlier sounds over there and really bright sounds on the right side. So one of the things that the, the ARP is doing is it's bouncing all around it throughout uh, a couple of octaves. And with this key affecting the stiffness, you're hearing a lot of different types of sounds in here. Based on which key is in the two octaves that it's hitting in. Like that one, that one's like a really high one. Ding. Mm. 
<clears throat> and once again, you get a decay that will dramatically change how long that's sounding. You can have some fun with the pitch envelope, too, with those weird stuff. That's really fun with the delay or bouncing around. There's a vibrato, but I don't think this is going to sound too good with what I've got going on because I got so many different things going on right now. I've got the. You know that. My bell sounds not sounding dull enough. Yeah, I think I was cutting off too much with the strong strength uh, slope. It still sounds a little stringy, but I really like how that sounds. I'm gonna leave it that way. And let me see if I can tweak this in any useful way. screw around with any of this now that I got this sounding good with it, it's sounding decent with both but I want to make each bit a little bit more distinct so that's good that sounds a lot less like a string and now it's doing one of the bouncy bells all over the place thing and that's adding to that So now I'm just working on this noise, trying to make it sound good with everything else that sounds good. That does sound a little bit more stringy with it. Uh, that that sharp decay is pulling down the frequency, like it's popping it up and then it's pulling it back down, and it, it kind of gives it like a bow scraping sort of sound. If I take that too low, it starts to get percussive, though. So yeah, with too much resonance, it, it starts to get too bell-like itself, and then it, that's going to make a mess out of everything else. So let's see. Almost get down to that, right? Like it's, it's I got it pumped up to 135 BPM and it's uh, doing that eighth note, so it's it's like a really kind of moving sort of thing that's happening there. I hope you've enjoyed this let's play. Thank you very much to all of my sponsors on Patreon for making this possible. I really appreciate the support, guys. You guys are awesome. Take it easy. All right, hear how that sounds with all the other stuff. All right, now comes the fun part. We've got this section in here where we can map 
how this is going to be bouncing around automatically with these time variables. That sounds fun, but a little messy. Yeah, that's too messy. Well, I can get away with a little bit of it. 